The Deathwing is the first company of the Dark Angel Space Marine chapter. They are not part of the Codex Astarte structure system, although the remaining companies of the chapter do adhere to the Codex. The entire first company of the Dark Angels chapter consists of dedicated squads of Terminator armor clad veterans. Prior to the Horus Heresy, during the Great Crusade, the power armor of the Dark Angels Legion was colored jet black. The Deathwing's company Astartes later painted their Terminator armor in a bone white color scheme to remember the lone squad of the Dark Angels Terminators who defended a Dark Angels recruitment planet known as Blaine's World from the Tyranid Gene Stealer invasion. These Terminators painted their armor white, the color of death, as they believed that they would never survive the confrontation. Surprisingly, these Terminators proved successful in reclaiming the world and in doing so, saved a crucial part of the Dark Angels' cultural heritage and genetic diversity of the chapter. Amongst the Unforgiven chapter, only the Dark Angels' Deathwing Company Terminators actually continued this tradition. The Deathwing are both the most stubborn and the most resilient of the Astartes of the Dark Angels chapter, and will often refuse to leave a battlefield, even if faced with overwhelming odds, citing the traditions of the Terminators who had saved the Dark Angels recruitment world. The Deathwing Company badge is a variant of the ancient icon of the Order, the Knightly Order of Lost Caliban that served as a precursor to the Dark Angels Legion. It is a downturned broken blade on a red roundel, which symbolizes the schism within the Dark Angels Legion that occurred due to Luther's uprising on Caliban during the closing days of the Horus Heresy. The origins of the Deathwing harken back to the early days of the Great Crusade, during the late 30th millennium, when the First Legion reunified with their missing Primarch, Lionel Johnson, upon the verdant death world of Caliban. He introduced to the largely Terran-born Astartes of the First Legion the organizational structure he had learned from the Order on Caliban. The Lion's tenets of loyalty, discipline, and self-efficiency were incorporated into everything the Legion did. Under the Lion's supervision, the First Legion was organized into specialized formations known collectively as the Hexogrammatons, also known as the Six Wings. These specialized formations existed outside the regular chain of command and organization of the Dark Angels Legion. They were an amalgamation of the later prescribed Terran Pre-Principia Bellicosa approach and organization used by the early Legion Astartes with that of the Caliban's Knightly Orders. Before the creation of the first Space Marine Legions, the Legion of Astartes were organized into a formation known as the Six Hosts of the Angels of Death with each of these hosts having its own specialization and purpose. Following the First Legion's reunification with their Primarch, the Lion incorporated the tradition of both the Six Hosts and the Order. Thus, the Six Wings of the First Legion were created. The Order of the Deathwing was a specialized formation of Cataphracty Terminator Armored Elites, who specialized in harrowing actions, shock assaults, and strategic decapitation strikes. The Deathwing is one of two of the original formations, the other being the Ravenwing, of the bygone First Legion to have survived into the present era of the late 41st millennium. The veteran Astartes of the First Company are usually arrayed in Terminator armor or standard power armor as battlefield requirements dictate. However, the Dark Angels are unusual in that they maintain an entire company that is only ever field as Terminator squads. Following the Horus Heresy, when the Space Marine Legions were divided into chapters as dictated in the newly authored Codex Astarte by the Ultramarines Primarch, Reboot Gilliman, the Legion's Terminator armor-equipped assault company was divided into several units, each composed of a hundred veteran Astartes and assigned to a successor chapter, formed from the original Legion. When a Dark Angel or other unforgiven Space Marine receives the covet promotion to his chapter's Deathwing Company, he learns the secret truth of the chapter and its successor. The Dark Angel's Primarch, Lionel Johnson, was betrayed at the end of the Horus Heresy by his second-in-command, Luther. Luther slew the Lion in single combat on the Dark Angel's lost homeworld of Caliban before he and those other Dark Angels who had been corrupted by Chaos were transported into the warp by the will of the ruinous powers. These traitor marines are known today as the Fallen Angels, 
and the Dark Angels and all their unforgiven kin are sworn to bring every one of the fallen to repent or death before they can receive the Emperor's forgiveness for their action during the heresy. The first company of Dark Angels is led by Belial, the current Grandmaster of the Deathwing Company. Following a spectacular victory at the world of Piscina IV during the Third War of Armageddon in the year 999 of the 41st millennium, Belial assumed the mantle of the Grand Master of the Deathwing after the violent death of his predecessor aboard the Space Hawk, Charnel Shrine. Shortly thereafter, Belial was elected to serve as the Grand Master of the Dark Angel's first company through the unanimous assent of the other masters and Grand Master of the chapter. He swiftly earned the approval of the chapter's supreme grandmaster himself, as well as the administration and unswerving loyalty of those under his command. The Deathwing is tasked with a mission that takes precedence over all others, even though they may be called upon to fight a wide range of foes. The Deathwing are responsible for crushing all foes of the Unforgiven, and there are no greater enemies than the Fallen. Like the Second Company of the Dark Angels and the other Unforgiven chapters, the Deathwing does not comply with the organization of the Space Marine chapters as outlined by the Codex Astarte, though all of the other companies of the Unforgiven chapter generally do so. The Battle Brothers of the Deathwing take no pride in their exceptional reputation. They know that their physical and mental fortitude is merely what is necessary to discharge their duties, prizing humble and selflessness over all else. Clad in pale, hawking plates of their tactical dreadnought armor, the veteran warriors of the Deathwing march unflinching into the fires of war. They feel no compassion, no remorse, and no fear. Their absolute devotion to the chapter leaves no room for anything but a cold and steady fanaticism, and they would advance willingly into the very maw of the warp itself were they ordered to do so. Whether fighting in the Deathwing Terminator squads, or advancing at the side of a chapter hero as part of a Deathwing command squad, these warriors are amongst the greatest in the Imperium. In battle, these indomitable Astartes blast apart their enemies with storm bolters while advancing into melee assault range. Deathwing Terminators feature a mix of weaponry for both long range and close combat oriented roles. Terminators typically begin engagement aboard an orbiting void ship, teleporting to the battlefield at a prearranged time often homing in on a signal from a ranging Ravenwing unit. By the time the foe sees the flashing signifying the arrival of the Deathwing's Terminator, it is already too late. The Deathwing appear in a blazing hail of gunfire, as if they had begun firing while en route. They live up to their name, arriving like a sword stroke to deliver the death blow. The constant regime of ritual, contemplation, and self-denial undergone by the Deathwing scours their souls clean of impurity. They are mentally and spiritually armored against the temptations of the demons and heretics, death to their lies and blandishments, just as they are to the pleas of innocence or cries for mercy. The Battle Brothers of the Deathwing, whether indoctrinated into the inner circle or not, fight in full acknowledgement that they are weapons, extensions of their master's will and indeed the Imperium has few weapons greater. The first company of the First Legion might not bask in their terrified, glorious reputation, but they always live up to it. A Deathwing Knight is a fell-handed warrior of the Dark Angels, a member of the elite First Company, whose glorious deeds on the field of battle are matched only by their unflinching devotion to the chapter. Deathwing Knights are a truly imposing sight, for in them, lives on some semblance of the lion himself. They embody silent strength, yet still nobility. In the stratified chapter's organization of the Dark Angels and the other Unforgiven, the Deathwing Knights represent the elite. Only the masters and grandmasters of the chapter rank higher, and they are only chosen from among the company of the Deathwing Knights, who are also members of the chapter's inner circle. None but the most fell-handed of warriors from the first company are promoted into the inner circle of the Deathwing, and displaying skill in battle is not enough to receive the honor of knighthood. A warrior must be wholly dedicated to the chapter, and must display an obsessive need to carry on the chapter's secret crusade to hunt down the remaining fallen. 
When a member of the Deathwing is deemed worthy of the honor, he is brought into the Chamber of Judgments in the Rock to face a series of challenges, each of which has been individualized to test the candidate's strength, resolve, and loyalty to the chapter, past any breaking point he may possess. Should the Astartes prevail in these tests, the warrior is granted the title of Knight and passes beneath the shadowed arc at the heart of the Chamber of Judgment. The Watcher in the Dark presents to him a Mace of Absolution and a Storm Shield, both priceless heirlooms from the time of the Great Crusade in the late 30th millennium, that sing with barely suppressed power beyond even the potency of the Astarte who will bear them. It is from amongst the Deathwing Knights that new company masters are selected, for there is no finer proving ground than this brotherhood. The Knights are utterly devoted to the hunt for the Fallen, and it is in this pursuance of this quest that they truly learn its cost. By the time the Deathwing Knight is promoted to the rank of Master, he understands implicitly that no life, even his own, is more important than the Dark Angel's never-ending quest for forgiveness. In battle, the Deathwing Knights are used as a heavy shock force. They teleport into the fight with Storm Shield locked. With incoming fire ricocheting off them, the Knights march forward to assault the greatest threat with impunity first slamming into the foe with their storm shield before laying into them with their power maces and flails. In the presence of a heretic, the knights of the Deathwing power up their ancient weapons to deliver a killing blow of earth-shattering force. The most skilled and veteran of Deathwing knights are known as Knight Masters. They wield an even more potent ancient power weapon known as the Flail of the Unforgiven. The highest ranking members of the inner circle are sometimes accompanied by a command squad from the first company. Such a hand-picked formation of the most veteran Deathwing Terminators make a formidable unit, ideal for a good bodyguard or to be assigned special duties by the librarians or interrogator chaplain. They can be equipped for any role and often include specialists such as the standard bearers, apothecaries, or even the first company champion. Belial, the Grand Master of the Deathwings, has personally led many command squads straight into the heart of battle, forging a breach in enemy lines and crushing opposing leaders. The Dark Angels are known for their stoic and intractable manner, unflinching against even the mightiest of foes. The Deathwing are paragons of stoicism, unwilling to take even a single step away from the enemy when battle is joined. Their prowess honed across countless battlefields so that they can weather any attack. The Deathwing favor rapid teleported attacks, appearing literally from nowhere, often collaborating with the more mobile Ravenwing squadrons on reconnaissance missions to ensure the precision of their teleportation coordinates. This delivers an overwhelming force against an unprepared enemy. Teleporting is the easiest way to strike from nowhere in Terminator armor but other methods work as effectively for a veteran of countless wars. Once the Ravenwings have located the enemy, the Deathwing are deployed to destroy them so utterly that not a single trace remains. In case of the Fallen Angels, the Deathwing cast down all of their works and grind them to dust beneath their Ceramite boots, so that none may ever know of the stain cast upon the Unforgiven's honor by their very existence. The fortunate are destroyed in the unstoppable maelstrom that is a Deathwing assault. The unfortunate are dragged away to the dungeons of the rock to suffer the attention of the interrogator chaplains and to confess their sins in the vain hope of a merciful end. With their armored halls decorated by the chapter's finest artisans, the venerable dreadnoughts of the Dark Angels exude somber nobility. All were once members of the Deathwing, and their halls are still painted in the ritual bone white bore by their elite warriors. The venerable dreadnoughts of the Dark Angels have fought for many Terran centuries, and sometimes longer in their chapter's name. They are, without exception, oath-sworn members of the Inner Circle. It is rare but not unknown for a battle brother to learn the dreaded secret of his chapter only after internment in a dreadnought sarcophagus and the sorrow and wrath of such enlightened revenants is terrible to behold. The dedication of the Dark Angel's venerable dreadnoughts to the hunt for the fallen is fevered and extreme. After all, 
where a typical battle brother may live to see a handful of the fallen brought to justice. With their exceptionally long lifespan, the venerable dreadnoughts see hundreds hunted down and captured. Over time, the pilots of the venerable dreadnoughts accumulate a wealth of wisdom concerning the fallen, their habits, their ploys, and the best ways to hunt them. Thus do the leaders of the chapter come to these ancients for advice on such matters and to perfect the art of the hunt under their guidance. It is difficult to rouse the eldest of these ancient cyborgs, and many legends slumber in the rock's halls of silence, powered down between the actions and awoken only in dire need. Below the rock's vaulted galleries, beyond the corridors of shadows, and the portal of penumbral sorrow, is the chamber of passageways. It is to this doomed and mysterious space that each prospect supreme grand master of the Dark Angels chapter is led by the keeper of the keys. As the greatest heroes of the chapter perform the rituals to send the aspirants on into darkness alone, they are watched over by a pair of silent ancient guardians. These are the wanderers in white, the two eldest venerable dreadnoughts, brothers of the Deathwing. The sarcophagi of these timeless gatekeepers are heavy with oath paper and ornate decorations, and their power plants rumble softly as they loom motionless in the dark. The identities and names they possess in life are completely subsumed by secret. Were any foe to penetrate the rock's countless defenses, it would be the duty of the wardens in white to form the last line and to destroy him without hesitation. For this reason, these dreadnoughts are only taken to war in the very greatest need, and even then only one may leave his post and his duty at any given time. Like great hunting beasts, the land raiders of the Deathwing bear down upon their prey with lethal intent. Painted in white and bearing the insignia of the Deathwing upon their armored flanks, these mighty tanks are elite specialists in their own right. Only the eldest land raiders are selected to serve in the Deathwing, vehicles with indomitable machine spirits that detest the works of traitors and heretics. So potent are these mechanized presences that they can effect a rudimentary repair upon their own structures as battle proceeds, shrugging off damage and rerouting power around compromised systems. In this way, enemies who see their shots strike home against the weapons or motive units have their cries of triumph cut short as the land raiders rolls from the blast, scorched but undaunted, and with its offensive capabilities still intact. The Deathwing make full use of both the Crusader and Redeemer variant marks of the Land Raider, and benefit enormously from the specialized abilities of these armored behemoths. The Dark Angel's records are full of accounts of Deathwing squads delivered into the heart of the foe by thundering Land Raider Crusaders, or supported against overwhelming hordes of Xenos or heretics by sweeping firestorms of the Land Raider Redeemer. Whoever the foe, the Land Raider of the Deathwing, face them with murderous determination. Deathwing weapons include the Mace of Absolution, bespiked, glowing with power and emanating an eerie mist from their vents. These ominous weapons are employed by the Deathwing Knights in their endless hunt for the Fallen. In the presence of the most accursed heretics, their power is amplified to awe-inspiring magnitudes. Flail of the Unforgiven is another weapon of the Deathwing. The leaders of the Deathwing Knights eschew the power mace of their fellows in favor of the brutal flails. These archaic weapons are carried as a badge of office and are a reminder to the fallen of their ultimate fate at the hands of the Dark Angels. Halberg of Caliban is a weapon the company champion of the Deathwings traditionally carries. This massive power weapon, reforged from the Blade of Caliban, shattered in battles long ago and incorporating the same grim technologies that power the weapons of the Deathwing Knights. Deathwing relics include the Foe Smitter. This ornate storm bolter was brought by Federic the Great amongst the foremost weaponsmiths of Mars during the age when the tech priests joined with the Emperor's forces to equip his armies for the Great Crusade. It was he who forged so many of the mastercrafted weapons still prized by the Imperium today. But even then, the weapon known as Foe Smitter was considered special, 
it was presented with honor to the First Legion of the Space Marines, where it was used to great effect by Brother Bartholomew, the first Grand Master of the Deathwing. To this day, Fosmitter can still lay down a cavalcade of fire and is highly prized by the Dark Angels and by the current Grand Master of the Deathwing, who always wields it. Mace of Redemption is another Deathwing relic. The Mace of Redemption is perhaps the greatest of the weapons forged by the Dark Angels to hunt their traitorous comrades. Blessed with incantations of vengeance, the hollow center of this sacred power mace flares white hot when it smites a foe. It is said that with the mace in hand, Supreme Grand Master Raphael struck down the Demon Prince ruler of the blasphemous world of New Caliban, allowing the Arch Heretic to be captured. Of all the Dark Angels who have ever hunted the Fallen, none have bested this heroic deed. Monster Slayer of Caliban This ancient weapon was traditionally bestowed upon the most honorable knight of the Order before the onset of the long quest into the wilds of Caliban. Its well-honed blade is empowered by a gravity force generator of magnified strength. However, over the ages, it has grown somewhat temperamental, and the know-how to fix such ancient technology is now beyond the tech marines of the Dark Angel's knowledge. It is believed, as long as its owner stays pure of mind, the monster slayer of Caliban will strike down even the greatest of foes. The last known Deathwing relic is the Sword of Silence. In time of need, Grand Master Belial wields the famous mastercrafted power sword known as the Sword of Silence. This sword is one of the legendary swords collectively known as the Heavenfall Blades. These formidable weapons are only carried by the highest ranking members of the inner circle of the Dark Angels. The chapter's lore states that these blades were forged from the core of a meteorite that struck the rock in orbit and around the feral world of Al Baradad. The mightiest of these blades is the Sword of Secrets, carried by the supreme grandmaster of the chapter and the current wielder of the sword is Azrael. The blade wielded by the grandmaster of the Deathwing and the grandmaster of the Ravenwing also utilize small amounts of the obsidian taken from the meteorite in their working. It is also said that a small portion of this meteor was dispatched to each of the Dark Angel successor chapters so that the senior members of the Unforgiven's own inner circle would also bear some heritage forged in steel as those bore by the masters of the Dark Angels.